Hello there, everyone. Let's see, we'll get started with about three more minutes. We'll get started. Oop. Let me swap to that other camera. There we go. Hello there. <laughs> Ooh. Hope everyone has had a wonderful Saturday. <clears throat> Hi, Cynthia. Hi, Eva. Howdy. Yeah, we got a couple more minutes before we get started, everyone. Hooey. I have spent half a day auditioning thread on my serger here to edge finish this kimono with. And I finally made a decision. <laughs> <laughs> At least I hope I did. <laughs> yeah, I did. Oh, hi, hi, Luz. Oh, I'm not sure how to say your pronounce your first name, Luz. Hi, Moya. I'm gonna call you by your the par second part of your name. Howdy. Hi, Mark. Welcome. Who, boy, howdy, everyone. It has. It started out being a rainy day here, and then it turned sunny, and all that fun stuff, and. Oh my goodness, it has been a wonderful day. And we got about one more minute and we'll get started. <laughs> I was actually shopping for kimono hangers from Japan today. I'm getting ready to order a couple of those. And what they are, they, it's, they cut, they don't look like a regular clothing hanger, but the ends extend out so it's hung with the sleeves directly out like this. When those come in, I'll have to show them all to you because I want to use, you can use them to actually display your kimono hanging up on a wall as well. Yes, Mark, it sure is. Oh my goodness. The leaves haven't really started changing yet, but I'm sure we get a few more cool nights like we've had and they will sure, certainly start to change, change colors, that's for sure. Okay, we're gonna get started everybody. This is what I'm calling episode two, a serger fun night making a kimono. Last night was the first night we got a lot accomplished. All I have left to do is to put the facing around the front and hem the sleeves and I'm going to hem, hem the actual hem at the bottom. But what I'm going to do, I'm not going to do like a double turn or single turn hem on this, especially because of this fabric. I'm actually just going to do an decorative thread finish to finish off the sleeves and everything. So, for instance, where'd my little sample go? Where'd my little sample go? Um, here maybe? Here it is, okay. I'm gonna swap to a different camera and show you what I've come up with. So I think this one. So this thread in the loopers is a 12 weight sulky thread. There we go, this is the fabric. So I did, I did a test in black. Then here's one in off white. And while that really blends in nicely, I think this really gives the edge a nice finish. Because if you look at the, the fabric in the kimono, there's a lot of black lines in it. So I thought that would really help finish that off nicely. And <clears throat> I'm using a, let's see, what am I doing? I'm doing a three thread narrow hem. Four, number four for the stitch length, the stitch width is the letter M, three mil, uh, not three. The letter M is in Mary on the stitch knob. And that's what the, uh, this is the, what the actual edge will look like right here. See how that heavyweight thread, isn't that pretty? I, I really like that. 
I think it will look just fine on this kimono, on this loungewear kimono. And while I liked how this looked, it was just didn't look finished enough for me. Okay. So the first thing I'm going to do, I'm going to hem the sleeves and the bottom edge of this kimono. That is my goal. Okay. <laughs> and this will go fairly quickly. And then we're going to work on the front facing and then the kimono will be done. Okay. So I'm going to back this camera out some. Oop, wrong way. There we go. Turn that just a bit there. Let me move my keyboard out of the way. And I'm just using the general purpose presser foot for my serger. One needle in the O2 position. And let's see, let's do this. Let's go to our other camera and I think you'll get the best view this way. Right here, and let me move it. There we go. There's that new overlock table for the Baby Lock Triumph. And it will also fit the ovation. Love this, oh my gosh. So happy with it. Now then, let me get to my first, I'm gonna do my sleeves first. There we go. Right there. And I want to do the, I'm going to start this at the underarm uh, seam line, which is that seam right there. This is the underarm seam. And this is the actual wrist opening. I've got about a four inch tail of my thread. I'm going to leave that because I'm going to use a technique to tie that off, I'm going to use the knotting technique, and I'll show you how I do that as we progress. And here we go. We're going to get started. I'm just going to take my time. There's no wrinkles in it. There we go. I wish I could find my fabric guide. I'm just, I'm going to order one this week from, from Baby Lock and have it delivered. Maybe two, so I don't, that way I'll have a backup. I've got one floating around here somewhere, but I just cannot find it. Let me pull that around there and look at that. Doesn't that look like a nice finish? Look here. Now what I did do, I, pra I did, hi Christina. What I did do, I adjusted my differential because on neutral, it was wanting to bunch up a little bit. So what I did, I've got my neutral all the way down. Okay, this lever is all the way down. And that really smoothed that seam out. Okay. Because while this is this knit fabric I'm stitching on is not super stretchy, it is, it's still a knit and it wanted to pucker a little bit with, that, with it in the in position. So by moving that neutral lever all the way down, it smoothed out that seam just perfectly. I've actually had people come into the shop wanting to know when I'd have some of these for sale. <laughs> And I haven't really thought about making them and selling them, but you know what? I just might have to do that. Now I'm coming around back around to my beginning. 
and I want to be careful and I do not want to cut my starting tail off because there it is right here see that so I'm gonna lay it over this way and I'm gonna be very careful as I come up here that I don't cut into the stitching I've already done with my knife There we go. And as soon as that needle hit that previous line of stitching, I just chained it off. I want to have about a four inch tail. I'm going to cut it. Now how I'm going to finish this, check it out. I am going to do an overhand knot. and then I will hit it with fray check. And make sure it's not causing a pucker or anything like that. But that is a strong finish right there. And then I'm gonna put fray check on it and let it dry and then I'll trim it. I might weave it in some of this other stitching with a needle before I do that. Cynthia, I am making a loungewear kimono, is what I'm making. I just finished that sleeve. Let me go to another camera now so you can get a good look at this. I think it, I really like how it looks. Hi, Allison. Okay, there we go. So this is, a, this is the part of the sleeve that comes around your wrist, like so. Okay, it's a big sleeve. This is a kimono style. So here's the actual sleeve. Oh, sleeve. Let me grab the shoulder seam. There we go. That's it, I think. It is. So here's where my fingers are right here. That's the shoulder seam. And right here. There we go. Yes, very cool fabric, Cynthia. I wasn't even thinking of buying fabric to make one of these, and I saw this when I was out shopping for upholstery fa for drapery fabric, and I saw this, and I had to have five yards of it. <laughs> okay, so, and there's what it looked like, everybody. I think the black, just took, because of all the black lines here on the zodiac dial, the constellations, I think it's the perfect edge finish for this particular garment. Okay, so I'm going to do the other sleeve now. And I'll tell you what, I think I can, I'm going to get it done tonight because guess what I'm going to wear when I have my morning coffee in the morning? I'm going to wear my new kimono. <laughs> oh, wonderful, Allison. <laughs> okay. So, so, let me swap back to this other camera. There we go. Move this around a little bit more there. And all I'm doing, I'm using this, see where that table meets and the edge of the metal? This is what I'm using just to eyeball my trip where I'm going to run the edge of the fabric. Right there. And just using the presser foot that came with my serger. And I'm just going to start surging. The thread I'm using, okay, this is this thread right here. This is 12 weight long Egyptian cotton. It's sulky. I don't know if you can see that or not. But it's a 12 weight and there are 300 meters on a spool which is 330 yards. But it's a nice heavyweight thread and it's great for loopers. It comes in a ton of different colors including variegated. So if you're ever wondering about a nice heavyweight um, serger thread this is it. 
Yes, it will, Cynthia, and on my back porch as well, watching the hummingbirds. The hummingbirds, I think, are getting, they know migration is coming soon because they are fighting each other over my hummingbird feeders. <laughs> There's enough for all of them, but they, I tell you, you'll get one and they think they own all five of them. <laughs> so here we go. And I'm not going fast with this. <clears throat> so this is a knit fabric. It's not like a four-way stretch, but if you're not careful, I'm keeping just a little bit of tension on this fabric. And what I've discovered, since this is just an edge finish, it's not turning anything under. I have to trim off about a quarter, an eighth to a quarter inch for it to make a clean finish with the knife. But boy howdy, it sure does look nice. I really like how it looks. So a little later you will get to see me change over from overlock to a triple cover stitch. But after I get my facing band attached, I plan on using a triple cover stitch to go over the seam one more time so it lays nice and flat. If I was actually in my workroom, I have the Euphoria to do. All it does is cover stitch, and I have them both set up when I'm in my workroom. I'm going to leave my tail, fold it back over here. And just edge it off the edge. Nice and easy. Then I'm going to do my overhand knot. Now I see I went too close to the edge there. Can you see that? Hold on. I went off the edge of my fabric. It's okay. I'm just going to go over it again. I got to yick to talking. I got to talking. It's okay. So now since I do not want that knife to cut anymore, I'm going to lock it in the down position. There's a lever right under this table here. Hold on. This baby lock serger. Right there it says lock. When you see the word lock, it locks that knife blade down so it will not trim anymore. And that's what I want because it's already trimmed at once. Now I'm just going to go over the edge here again. And after I fray check it, this is not going to go anywhere. There we go. There we go. And that's an underarm seam. It's not really going to show. I'm going to let those dangle until I get my bottle of fray check and then I'll finish those off. And when it dries, I'll just clip them right off right there. Okay, so there's my two sleeves done. Yay. Now I'm going to do the bottom hem next. You think, am I or aren't I? Do, do, do. Let me think. Yes, I am. So, make sure I have my bottom hem here. Yes, that's the bottom hem. And this still has all the selvage on it uh, from being off the bolt, and I'm just going to trim it with the knife. Let me put my knife back up. And I'm, it's just going to trim it right where the, that the knife is going to follow where the selvage meets the fabric. There, I think I said it correctly that time. There we go. 
right there. And we're going to go all the way across. Oh, Mary, I can't wait either. I'm happy to make sure you say hello to me, Mary. We're all going to have so much fun in Punta Gorda. And that's only two weeks. It's, it is less than two weeks. Oh, my goodness, I think. Isn't it? Yes, it is. Two weeks from tomorrow, it begins. And it is going to be a blast. That sure didn't did not take long to him two sleeves. Oh, wonderful, Mary! You're gonna I have a really cool project for everybody for the class in Pentagorda. Excuse me. So next, I've got my two sleeves hemmed. I have the bottom of the kimono hemmed. All I have left to do to complete this is finish. Um, the facing around the neck opening and all the way down the side. So let me get to that area. And I'm going to have to rethread my machine. There we go. So, okay. Okay, there we go. There is that. Now then, let's go to another camera okay and I'm gonna move while we're on this camera I'm gonna move my small one um, oh mark the fin purpose of the facing it'll be like a, a like a three and a half or four inch band all the way down both of the front sides just to finish the edges and and to add some stability to the front of that kimono it's just like you would see on many many different types there's so many different types of kimonos everybody now I'm going to turn my camera swap my camera again and do my final adjustment and then I can thread there we go there we go okay so <clears throat> I'm gonna remove all my thread that I have threaded at this moment. Cut it up there, raise my presser foot, pull these forward, and then they'll just pull out in one swoop. Everything is unthreaded. There it is. So Mark, think of like a bathrobe, for instance. You have like a band around the front of the bathrobe and around the neck like this. And that's what I'm calling the facing. Probably a better term for it is a band, neck band or facing band. I just call it the facing. That's just what I call it. Let me get my little spools off. It adds a professional finish to the opening. <clears throat> because if it was just left, if I just finished around that edging, like what I just did around the sleeves and the, 
if I did around the front, the front edging of the kimono slash robe with the thread like I just did everything else, there'd be no stability to that edge of that fabric. So, and that's where you get the most wear and tear on this type of garment. So you want something there to help stabilize it is the best way I can explain it. Okay, so I'm gonna thread it up. <clears throat> I'm going to do a four thread overlock. And let's see here. Let me get all my little cone holders back on. And we're just gonna start threading it up. I'm gonna, oh, I do have to put in, I will have to put in another needle. I'm doing a four thread overlock here. Let's get that cone out of the way. Okay. Just getting my cones in place and then I'll thread it. Okay. And what I'm using is an off-white light cream color throughout both loopers and both needles. Okay. Let me get my tool out. I got it out. And I stuck my needle in a piece of fabric. I had to take one needle out for what I just did, so I'm going to reuse it. It was new when I started, so there's no sense to put in a brand new needle. Come on you, get up there. There we go. And on this serger <clears throat> specifically, when you insert needles, everybody, check this out. You want to make sure they're all the way up. And on this serger in particular, and most new baby lock sergers, let's see if that will focus in. Give it a second. You find something white to put in behind them. Here we go. They are not parallel. The tips of the needles fully inserted are not even with each other. See that? See how this one's a little bit higher? That's what it's supposed to look like when those, this is the O1 and O2 needle, which is the needles when you're doing overlock. There you go. It's in focus now. But see how those are one, this one, the left needle is higher up than the right one. That's what it is supposed to look like, everyone. Okay. So, got that done. Needles are in. Now all I have to do is put, is actually run the thread through on everything. So I'm going to start with my O1 needle and work my way this way. You can actually thread these in any order. Make sure your, your presser foot is up. Oops, that's not right. This is for a needle. Well, that is right. <laughs> Usually I thread from my loopers over to the, need the needles. However, <laughs> I'm just changing it up this time and doing it a little bit differently. There, I got my threading tubes engaged. Now the Triumph fit thread air threads the actual needles also. There's one threaded. I'll press that back down. I'll thread the rightmost needle, the O2 needle. And the reason I'm doing it this way, what I've discovered, 
<clears throat> and this is what works for me, you know, every, everybody has a different way of doing stuff. But for me, this order works. I like how it works because as I'm going this way, I'm not having to put stuff in front of another piece of thread, if that makes sense. This just works for me. You can do it any way you want to. And now both of my needles are threaded. Super easy. Just pull out some slack. And there they are. Now we're going to do our loopers. I'm going to do the upper looper first. I'm working left to right on my threading. There we go. That is threaded. I remember the old sergers, oh my gosh. It could take <laughs> literally half an hour or even a little longer to thread one properly because they were so complicated to thread. Not anymore. It actually makes, makes surging fun when you have one of these air threading sergers. There we go. All threaded up. And let's see here. I'm going to put my stitch width right here to its widest point, which is 7.5 slash 6.0. And I'm going to turn my stitch length to 3. 3 regular. And now I am ready to surge. Okay. But first, what I'm going to do, I've made a few of these. And what I've discovered is this. First, I'm actually going to turn my stitch width to its most narrow position, <clears throat> which is 5.5. Okay. 5.5. This is four thread overlock. And the reason I'm going to do that. This is my facing fabric right here for my band. What I'm going to do first, instead of having to pin three layers of slippery fabric together, I'm going to fold this in half. And I'm just going to surge these two areas together. Wrong sides together, everybody. Now, if I was doing this on a sewing machine, it'd be a completely different process. But since I'm using the serger, it's way easier to do this on a serger than on a straight stitch machine. Okay. I'm just going to serge that whole, this whole length together. Let's see here. Hi, Coralie. Oh, Red Robin, have some fries for me. I love those fries at Red Robin. Here we go. I'm going to raise that, get that under the foot. I'm just going to follow that line right here where the table, so you can see what I'm looking at here. Right here, this line, which is also the edge. This edge follows that line, following the edge of the metal to place my fabric as I'm sewing. Okay, there we go. Sure that's looking okay. All I have to do is take my time and keep lining up these raw edges. Oh, regular, please. I like sweet potato fries. Poorly, but I love their regular seasoned fries. They're good. Uh, 
So Coralie, last night you asked, after I had shut everything down, I saw the message. What was what did I cook for dinner last night? I had we had salad and cold and deli sandwiches for dinner. Tonight I made um, in the Instapot a chicken vegetable broth soup. I cooked, I put in the Instapot um, about eight frozen drumsticks. And I cooked those normal and on a normal pressure high setting for 15 minutes. They were frozen like a brick. And then in my other liner, I have more than one insert for my Instapot. So as those were releasing pressure naturally, I was fixing my vegetable pot and I had freshly chopped carrots and onions and corn and potatoes and some seasoning with some olive oil and different things and then I cooked that for five minutes same pressure setting and then I let it I let the steam release naturally and then while that was doing that I deboned all the chicken threw away the skin and then I, after the vegetable broth mix was done, I also, when what I also added to the vegetable broth, I drained off all the chicken broth into that other, that second pot. Steamed it, I pressure cooked it for five minutes. Then I added the debone chicken to that. And the chicken was already done. Then I just let it sit on a warm setting for 15 minutes and it was finished and it is sure is good. Then I added some seasoning, different types of seasonings that I like to cook. And I've had that for lunch, for lunch today and I had a bowl, another bowl at about four o'clock as well. It was sure was good. I'll probably have another bowl before I go to bed tonight. Okay. Well, that is a an interesting name not tethered to my phone <laughs> you're fine wonderful welcome good evening nope no apologies needed but that's a cool name I love it What I'm doing, I'm technically, for lack of a better word, I am basting my facing strips together before I attach them around the opening and the neck opening of my loungewear kimono. Almost to the end.
coming to the end here. So there that is. Now, there's, I'm actually only two seams away from being complete. Let me go to another camera. Do, 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 do. Right up here. There we go. Okay. I need a drink of my water. So as you can see right here, <clears throat> there it is. <clears throat> and what I will do next, I will turn my stitch width all the way to its widest position next, because that way it will cover up the stitching that I just did. Because I'm gonna do my best not to trim in, but hardly any more off of this. But what I'm going to do next, I'm going to find the center of this long strip, okay? Get the two ends fairly close. I'll, be ha I'll have some of this to trim off, a pretty good chunk of it, and that's okay. I just cut three strips with the fabric to create this with. Just want to find the center of this unit I just created. There we go. I'm going to put a pin in it. Okay, now this center of this facing strip will get pinned to the center, excuse me, of the back of the kimono. Let me find it. <laughs> Where are you? Up this way, right? That's the end of it. It's not what I want. It's this way then. There we go right there. So the center would be right in between these two points. I'll put another pin here that I just have to match up my pins. Okay. I'm going to make it as easy as possible. Then I'm just going to match the two pins and pin it Together. Now I want this pinned on the outside or the right, we're going to pin this to the right side of the kimono. So this is the inside here, so I'm going to bring it back here to the right side. Get up there you. Right there. And what I'm going to do, though, what I want to do, I want to trim this selvage off right here. Almost forgot to do that. So I'm just going to trim it. Just trim right at the selvage line. Trim it off. There we go. Okay. Now I can pin it together once I remark. Mm, there it is. Remark my center line. Right there.
Okay. Then there's my other pin. I'm going to match those two pins up. There they are. Now that my finger's on that, I'm going to pin it together. And what I do if I'm going to handle a lot, I'll go in and out once and then a second time. That'll give you a nice firm pinning. And then I'm going to work my way down each side from that center and pin it about every, well, I don't know, six or eight inches, whatever, till I get to the bottom of my kimono, the bottom hem. Keep that shoulder seam as flat as I can. Once I get past my shoulder seam, I won't have to put in as many pins. There we go. <clears throat> and just by taking that, now this one that I just surged, it's got a nice firmness to the edge and it just makes this process so much easier to not only to pin it, but to actually surge it. Because you don't have three knit edges <laughs> trying to keep lined up it makes it easier to do trust this is from experience trust me on this Puffin's over here in his little couch just snoring for all it's worth. When I said his name, he didn't even raise his head. He's out of it. Pin, pin, pin. all the way down to the bottom. Now there's some excess and I'm going to trim it off with my scissors but I'm going to leave oh about three to four inches until it's complete. Okay. I'm going to 
work my way back down the other side and get my pinning done. And then we'll be ready to sew. You could literally make these out of any fabric. Cotton gauze. I have some cotton gauze, a bolt of that ordered to make some with. And <clears throat> you could use, I've made a lot of them out of cotton quilting fabric. They make beautiful kimonos. I know most people think kimono, you think of those fancy dress, dressy kimonos and all. No, this is more like a dress, a casual loungewear type of kimono. It is not a formal kimono. That would take, <laughs> that would take a bit of time to create. They're beautiful though, I love kimonos. Just like a quilt, they're actually a piece of art. And there's a run right there. There we go. Just smooth that out. And that is a result of having a rotary cutting blade with a nick in it is what caused that. I remember when I was cutting now. Okay, that's good. Okay, let's get some more pins put in. few more here I'm going to cut off and leave about a four inch tail. There we go. There. Now then, I am going to start at the other end because I want the kimono side down. Because I want to be able to see my previous overlock stitch on this band. There we go. Okay, so you know, I've got this set to this all the way up to its widest point. Still on three. And what I'm going to do is give me a little start here. Actually start it off on my excess because that way I can get it lined up right where I want it as it goes through. Okay. 
me swap to that other camera. There we go. Do my best not to have any pleats or tucks in it. Try to keep it as smooth as possible. fairly quickly not intentionally it just sometimes fabric has a mind of its own sometimes it's easy sometimes it's not this one happens to be moving okay I'm getting up to my neck opening and there is is where I'm going to take some time make sure everything stays nice and flat can see all these pins coming up. That's my neck opening. There we go. Now we can put the pedal to the metal, <clears throat> so to speak. This would definitely be a fabric <clears throat> that I would probably never put in a washing machine after handling it. <clears throat> Excuse me. Simply because this looks like dry clean fabric to me. I know it's 100% polyester, but it has, it just has that certain feel to it. 
that kind of tells me if you did put it in a washer, it'd have to be on hand wash, cold water, and gentle air dry, or I would just hang it on a drying rack to dry it if I was going to wash it at home. Because I just don't think that uh, you put it through an agitator, a heavy laundry cycle, it's not going to fare well. I wouldn't pay for this particular fabric anyway. Okay, come back out there. Let's see, how do I want to do you? I'm going to do you right here like this. Okay, so that is attached now. Ooh-wee, now let me get to another camera view here. Woohoo! Okay, so there, here was the front of it. Here is the bottom hem. Now all I have left to do is decide what I'm going to do down here. So what I'm going to do, I could tr I could trim it, turn it inside out, straight stitch across. But what I think I'm going to do is just once everything is done, I'm going to do this type of a trim and let the knife cut off this excess. But I'm not going to do that yet because now do I really want to do a cover stitch over this? I'm not sure how this fabric would handle that. So what I am going to do, I'm going to go ahead and set it up for um, a three thread, a triple cover stitch. Let me think here. Yes, a triple cover stitch. And I'm going to put woolly nylon in the looper because my goal is to open this up I'm going to make sure the seam goes towards the kimono, not the face seam. I'm going to top stitch right along the seam line, right to the left of this seam line. So those needles come and cover all of this, this overlock up with woolly nylon thread. That is my goal. We'll see if that works. I'm not 100% committed to that just yet. Not until I do a test sew. Ooh. Ooh. Fibery dust. Let me clean up all my needles. That I pulled out. I'm done with those on this project. Literally very close to being done and complete. Now then. What I'm going to do, I'm going to re-thread my machine. I'm going to re-thread my machine and set it up for cover stitch. I'm going to take off my overlock table. And where is, where is my other table for this? Let me think. It is in my serger bag. I'll be right back. Take a five minute break. I'm not gonna be gone five minutes, but I'm gonna put up the intermission screen. I'll be right back. Okay, I'm back. Okay, so what I was talking about is this. Okay, so here is the cover stitch table. This is the new, the new overlock table. This came with the serger. This is now an option, optional purchase. If you have a Triumph or an ovation, you want this new overlock table, everybody. Just trust me on that. 
I wouldn't consider this a want, this is a need. You need this, you must have this. Okay, so I'm gonna attach my um, cover stitch table. I just turned my stitch length to four. I'm gonna lock down my knife blade because I won't be using the knife. There we go. I've also got to lock down my upper looper. There we go. I'm going to I'm going to need another needle, so let me grab another needle right there. And we unthread it. So all the threads out of the thread path. Then let's see, I'm going to need to take these off. Then I'm going to add three over here. C1, C2, and C3. There we go. Okay. Now I'm going to move my needles out. Take both of my O1 and O2 needles are coming out. And I'll put one in C1, 2, and 3. Chain 1, chain 2, chain 3. They all get one. Take the foot off. I find it easier to insert your needles if you take the foot completely out of the picture. Yeah, come on you. Probably should loosen it up first. That might be a benefit. flat side to the back. Here's one. Here's two. One more. There's three. quite right. That is right. Oh, don't worry everybody. I will do a test so before I put my kimono under the needle. <laughs> I've learned the hard way to always do that. It looks good. Check this one needle out. Just making sure they're all the way up. Okay, woohoo! I'm ready to thread my needles. Yay! Get some more loose thread out of there. There we go. So I am going to start, and I am going to do. Which one do I want to do first? I'm going to do go from three 
to two to one. You can do them in any order. Turn that over to chain cover for my air threading for the needle. No, I don't want to do that. I want to go one, one to three. That way I don't cross any of my threads as I'm as I'm as I am threading. You can do them whatever order you want to do them. This is just how I'm doing it. There we go. Okay. needle number two. Oops, do not pull that thread out, Richard. There we go. Okay. I'm about ready to unthread <laughs> the needle I just threaded. Hold on. There we go. Okay, let's just put you off to that side for a minute. There we go. Okay. Needle number two threaded. Okay. Now we'll do needle C3, chain needle number three. If you're not familiar with the baby lock searcher, the C1, C2, C3, those are references that are throughout the threading charts on how to thread the machine. And it'll say use C1 or C2 or whatever. And then you know which needles that you actually need to have in the machine to use to create the stitch that you're trying to create. Okay, we are doing a triple cover stitch is the stitch we're gonna be creating. Needles are completely threaded now. Let me get my foot back on. There we go. Okay. Then all I have left to do is to chain my looper thread not chain, but thread my looper. And while this looks really bright and yellow, it's very pale. This is a pale lemon, lemony beige. It looks really bright here, but stitched down, it will not be. So this is what is called woolly nylon. And I'm gonna use it to cover up that, that, cut, that four thread overlock, cause that'll be next to your skin. Okay, does that make sense? Anyway, it'll give it a nice clean finish on this garment. If I can, I'm not sure I can use it, but that's what we're about to find out. And since it's a woolly, I know I will have to use a threading cradle to get it to go through these air loopers. So I'm just gonna run the thread up to my threading port and then create a thread cradle out of serger th regular serger thread to do this. Okay, come on you, here you go. Here we go. This is really soft, like real squishy yarn, this little, what's called woolly nylon. 
So I'm going to swap to another camera so you can get a better look at what I'm doing. There we go. So that port there that has the letter C, that is to put my chain looper thread through. However, since I'm using woolly nylon, you just can't stick woolly nylon in an air threader because it's not going to push it through the machine on its own. So I'm going to get me about a one yard piece of serger thread. I'm going to fold it in half, make the two ends even. Or as close to even as you can get it. <laughs> there we go. That's good. Then I'm going to stick both ends in the threading port. I'm just going to trim them. There we go. Both ends go in the threading port. Come on, you. There we go. I'm going to hold on to one end, otherwise it'll just take it all the way through. Now it came out over here, my double-ended thread right over here. Hold on. There we go. Here's where that thread tail came out, was on the opposite side of the presser foot. Now in this loop right here, I'm going to stick the end of my woolly nylon through that little loop of thread. There we go. And now I can just pull it through. And it pulled it through so well, I didn't have enough of it out. <laughs> <laughs> so I get to do it again. <laughs> Woo. It's all good. You could also use a threading wire, but quite honestly, I just like to use the thread, a thread cradle. Anytime you're putting a heavy or hard uh, piece of thread through your loopers, through these threading tubes, this is how to get around that. Okay. Let's try this again. Okay. There we go. Now I have woolly nylon coming out the other edge. What I just did, I turned my chain looper tension all the way to zero. This little knob right here, this little dial. This, if I have it on, if I have serger thread in, I'll put it on three. If I have a heavy thread, I turn it to zero. Okay. So now, do to do, let me cut me off about, leave about a four inch tail, shut my door, and we should be good to go. Let's see, yes, up, yes. That's all good. That's all good. So I'm going to take a scrap piece of fabric. And there's a... <clears throat> well, that's not what I really wanted. Let's see here. Here are some of the actual fabric where I've sewn some little scrap pieces together. So I'm going to do... What you do is you put the, the, the overlock seam you just did underneath lay it to the, make sure it's going to the side that you want to put and I meant you know what I'm going to swap this foot out to the chain cover stitch foot hold on I think I have it right here if not let me go grab one I'll just do do bad here it is I usually keep one of those in my little door so I'm going to swap over to this chain and cover stitch foot This is what I have been using, your general purpose foot. 
swapping to the chain cover stitch foot, you can see how much narrower this foot is. Like that. Okay. So let's attach that. This I know will give a better result than the one I did have in. And so what I'm doing here, let me show you how I would line this up. So here's my seam. I have the seam on the back going from here to here. So my foot is holding that is right on top of the, the overlock seam I made in the previous step. Step. Bleh, step. Now, what I'm going to do, I'm just going to run this all the way down to the end. Now that it's started, I'm going to trip this, snip these thread ends right there. I haven't decided that I'm going to do this yet, but this will let me know if I really want to do this. So there's what it looks like on the back. See how it covered the edge of that with that woolly nylon? However, this is not going to be a good candidate for it because, oh I see, I actually got off. It really kind of crinkled it and I see the reason why now. Hold on. I'm going to do it in the opposite direction, see if it does any better now that I see what I need to do. Try it this way, see what happens. Much better. So this looks bad right here because I didn't have it the first needle close to the seam edge. I got it much closer on this one. Let's look at that part in between my fingers there. That looks much better. And now I just have to decide if I want to do this or not. <laughs> Do I want to do that? Let me think here for a second. Let me, let me move my other camera to my other camera. Okay. Let me just go to my face cam for a minute. Because I, I got to think on this for a second, everybody look at the actual garment itself and think how I would do this if I do it. I think it would I actually think it would give it a good finish. Let me go up here and have a look as well. You know what? I'm just gonna do it. I'm just gonna go for it. I'm not going to overthink it. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Ooh. Let me think here. This is going to require a little bit of water. Okay. thinking while I'm looking at this also. Okay. 
Yes, I am going to do that. I've decided. I have decided. So. Yes, it will just give it a good finish. And that's what I'm going to do. Okay. Okay. So, what we're going to do. Think overnight. Mm. No, Mary, I don't think so. I think it's, this is what I'm going to do. It'll be good. I'm going to, let me swap to my other camera so you all can see what I'm doing. Let's see here. Oops. There you go. There you go. Now then. Because this step will only take literally like two or three minutes. I'm within 10 to 15 minutes of being 100% done with this. So see what I'm doing here? <clears throat> I'm lining this up so that the edge of that, when I'm pulling it apart, my seam underneath is coming out this way, okay? And what I'm going to do, I'm going to run this C3, the rightmost needle, as close to this edge of this seam as I can. That's what I'm, what I'm after here. Okay. Right there. I'm going to lower my foot. Okay. And we're going to get, we're going to, we're going to do it. I will have to take a little bit more time as I'm not going to go super fast with this because I'm going to pull the seam open as I'm doing this. I'll move these scissors out of my way and this other stuff right here. Now we're good to go. Oh, that looks good. It looks real good. in there better. Have another look. I like how that looks on the seams, everybody. looks really nice. Yes, Christina, it does. Look at this. Let me pull some of this around here. Now you can see there it is. It gives it a nice, um, like a triple top stitch. It does give it a nice finished, a nice finished look to it. 
doesn't it? I really like it. And I've done this on the ones I make out of cotton. But when I do them previously, when I've done it on cotton, I'll do this on all the seams one step at a time, which is why I like to have this machine, the Triumph set up for overlock side, and then my Euphoria to do the triple cover stitch because each time I make a seam, I, I overlock it, and then I take it over to the Euphoria, and I do my triple cover stitch on it, and then I don't have to complete always be, I'm not constantly swapping back and forth, if that makes sense. It saves a lot of time. I had done it with all the seams on this now. Oh well. It's all good. Especially on this seam is the most important in my opinion. Simply because it really gives the edge finish right around the front of the garment a nice finished look. down to the end of the line here. this backing up some. There we go. So there's the bottom hem right here where my hand is. And I have this little flap to contend with. So what I'm going to do is set it back up for overlock. <laughs> yes, I am. I'm going to set it back up for overlock. And then I'm going to use this stitch with the same thread and trim it off right here across. And then I'll make sure that I fray check this area good, put some seam sealant on it, and it will be complete at that point. Okay, so what I'm going to do now is, but I love how that finished, that seam, that top stitching. Oh my gosh, it looks, it looks really, it's a beautiful finish. On the back of it, there's the back of it right here. right there. So what I'm going to do next, let me have another look at something real quick. Yeah. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to swap this over to my three thread narrow hem that I was using before. Okay. And I'm just going to start Kept removing the thread. Let me take off my cover stitch table. I'll replace it with the overlock table. Let's see, I will need to raise that up. Raise my knife. I'm going to turn this to M. Right, right. 
Leave that on four. That's good. That's raised. That's raised. Let me rotate this towards me. There's my upper looper back in play. Okay. Now I'm going to start removing threads. Press her foot up. Pull that one towards me. Pull all the needle threads towards me, and then they should all just come right out. It's caught on the foot. Come on, you. There you go. Yeah, now it's empty of thread. Okay. Woohoo. So now. I'm going to put in, I will be using just the O2 needle. So this will be my O2 needle right here. Right there. Then I'll use these two 12 weights, sulky 12 weights, in the upper and lower loopers. Looper and lower looper. Okay, now I have to change needles. red-handed needle thingy. You're here close. <laughs> yes, my red-handed, there we go, my red-handed, red-handled needle removing hex screwdriver, <laughs> for lack of a better word. Have three needles to take out and one needle to put back in. needle goes into the O2. Let's get that foot taken off and out of the way. So one, have under the O2 hole, right there. Right there. Okay. <clears throat> now we are ready to thread. And we're gonna use our general purpose foot again. which is also called the BL foot. There's a little stamp there on it. <coughs> Excuse me. Okay. And now we are ready to thread. I'm gonna do my needle first, O2. Okay. 
here's the O2 needle threaded. Now we'll do upper looper. the upper looper thread. Then we'll get the lower looper. Oops. Usually for this thread, I have to use a threading for my lower looper. That thread's really thick, and the lower looper has a few more turns to make than the other loopers. Okay. About a yard of sur regular serger thread. You don't have to measure it, just get an arm's length. That's approximately a yard. Run that through the lower looper. Hold on to the end so it doesn't take it all the way through. I see it. Yeah, let me stick the end of my lower looper thread through that loop. This is called a threading cradle, everybody. And there we go. Alrighty. Now we'll put our overlock table back on. Excuse me. Now then, we're all set. Let me give me a drink of water. I'm going to do a couple of tests here on some scraps. look good. That'll work. Okay. So what I'm going to do here, here is my actual garment. <clears throat> Let me check one more setting here because that looked larger than my other one. Do, 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 do. Is it? Put that letter M, and that's is where it's at. Okay. Wanted well, to make sure. Oops. Want to make a sure. Now then.
And I tell you what I'm going to use, I'm going to use the open toed foot for this so I can line up my needle to my previous line of stitching. Hold on just a second. I really like that foot. Where did I pet you? Just a moment. <clears throat> Put it right up there, but evidently not. I know it's right here because I was using it earlier. <clears throat> Where are you at, open toed foot? Let's see here. Maybe I won't be using my open toed foot. It's okay. There it is. Duh. This is what's called the open toed foot. There's no metal here, but that way you could line up your previous line of stitching right before it hits that needle. Let me get it lined up and then I'll give you a close up view once I get it lined up before I start stitching. Okay, so let me just do one more little test sew here to make sure that foot will feed it adequately for what I'm trying to do. Looks good. setting because this just does I think I must have had that on a much smaller stitch width let me try one do one more test here a better match we'll go with that okay now then where was that piece where was that bottom hem there we go alrighty what do I want to do here I'm gonna do this let's see there. Now, I'm going to bring this up and show you why I switched <clears throat> to this open toed foot. Let the focus come in. There we go. With that cut out in the foot, you can see that black in there, that's my previous stitching. So this is how, this is how um, this is how you can line up your needle to a previous line of stitching so that when you start a different line on top of it, it all lines up. Don't know about the thread catcher y'all are talking about because are you talking about the one that the machine sits on with a little plastic bag underneath it? Because I'm not sure which thread catcher y'all are talking about. Yeah, it didn't come in as well as I had hoped it would. Um, not tethered, so it's all good. So I'm going to go ahead and get this one stitched, and I'll give you a good look at what I did. Looks good. So 
so here's what I did. <clears throat> I just trimmed off the excess that was coming back out this way, okay? Here's my hem. So I just backed it up and lined up the needle so it would pick up on that hem and just come straight across. Now what I'll do with these, I am going to put a drop of fray check at each one of the junctions where the tail thread is. And when it dries, I'm going to take it with a needle and put it up underneath that. Okay, so there's that side. I got one more side. And it is right. One more side to do. Where are you? Let's see. I just did. Here's the other side right here. Okay. <clears throat> Excuse me. So let me bring this camera up so you can get a better look at it this time. There we go. Okay. There should be good. complete. Now, later on, if I, for whatever reason, if I change my mind and I'm going to do a fold up hem, well, guess what? My edges are finished. I could still turn it under once or even twice and do a regular hem on it. So it's all good. Okay. So yeah, there there is no, they baby lock started doing the doing away with those on their machines quite a while back, tethered. <clears throat> and the idea is because I know there's so you can buy some that have been three D printed for that. There is someone I think they're on Etsy baby but they are doing 3d prints of what you're taught a thread bin is what you're talking about mm -hmm. and I remember those but baby lock machines the only one that I think possibly comes with it might be the vibrant which is not in the line of the air threading sergers but no they no baby lock machine comes with a thread bin there's a plastic tray that sits on your table that you can attach a bag to and personally I like those better than a thread bin myself but yeah yay that is guess what everyone other than applying the the fray check the fray check fray block to where I have my thread ends letting it dry and trimming it this kimono is done I will have it for coffee in the morning. I'm so excited. Yay. But if I had to do this one over, check it out. So if you have bought one of those third party tread, 3D printed tread bins for your triumph or ovation or whatever, this table will not interfere with that, just so you know. No, it will not interfere a bit with it. Okay, so here it is. If I had to do this over, let me go to my other camera. Hold on. After making this one with the knit, I have not made one out of this type of a fabric before. And right here we go. So if I had it to do over, I love 
See, there's my face, what I call my facing I attached. But there it is with the triple uh, top stitching. I love how that looks. If I was going to do this over, every seam I made, starting with the shoulder seam, let me get up to the shoulder. It's up here somewhere. There it is. <laughs> If I had to do this over, I would have done that triple top stitching on every single seam. I'd have done it there, then attached the sleeve, then did the triple stitch around the sleeve. Everywhere I would have done that. It would look so much better. It actually has this little, this table, it doesn't come with a bin but it does have a little slot for your scraps to fall down into. So let me move my camera back, check it out. There it is. See, this is a hole that goes all the way underneath. There's my finger, hello. <laughs> and what that does, so from right here, this piece of plastic right here going down, this is the same size as the, the overlock knife cover that came with the machine. The new table adds this this much plastic right here to it. So from here to here is what was added to the overlock the overlock knife cover to have the table. So if you have bought a third party thread catching bin that fit underneath here it'll still work with this okay but yay my kimono is done i'll be having coffee on the back porch in the morning with it unless it is pouring down raining which that's always a possibility this time of the year <laughs> and there we go and <clears throat> if you're coming to punta gorda those of you that are coming to Punta Gorda, this will be down there and you'll be able to check it out. Try it on if you want to, yes. And I will have a couple of other of my kimonos with me as well. So everybody, that's what I have for you tonight. Tomorrow I have a very busy day. I have a very busy, the next few days are gonna be completely consumed with making draperies for my customer in Ohio. So I will not be on here again. I will probably get on here probably Wednesday night or Thursday night is what I'm looking at. Friday, I am headed to Ohio. So that's gonna be a travel day for me. Tethered, I do not know how much that new table is. I would recommend you call your baby lock retailer and they will give you a good deal on it. Tell them Richard sent you and that Richard said for you to give them a good deal, <laughs> okay? Believe it or not, that does work sometimes. <laughs> Thank you, Mary. Thank you. So, yay, this was fun. I love my sergers. You know, I love quilting and embroidery and all that, but I love doing serger stuff. It's so much fun. And I tell you, if I had done this, say, on my sewing machine, I wouldn't even be halfway done with it by now. It really, it really just makes it faster for some projects to do on a serger than versus a sewing machine. Oh, thank you. Thank you. I appreciate all of you. And everyone, have a wonderful evening. Cora Lee, I hope you had a couple of fries at Red Robin for me. I don't have one around here. I only get to eat those when I'm traveling. Everyone have a wonderful rest of your evening and a glorious Sunday, and I will see you all soon. Hugs. Good night, everybody.